Welcome to lesson eight where we'll be learning how to compare functions. So in this problem we're given some information about two different locations that sell apples. And we're going to use that information to compare which one's better in different situations. So one piece of advice that I would give you is to take the table when you're given a table and turn that into a graph. So we are given a graph of k of x which gives us a nice visual of their function and we are given a table for g of x. I'm going to take each of these x's and their y's and use that to graph this function onto the other graph. In my opinion, it's much easier to compare two functions when you have them both in the same representation. So now we should be able to answer some of these questions. For part A, they tell us to determine the value of 1.5 being plugged into k. k of 1.5 means plug in 1.5 for k. So the k function is the Kuiper's farm function, and we're looking for an input of 1.5. So an x of 1.5, which would take us to this y value of 3.5. The x is representing the number of pounds of apples, and the y is representing the total cost. So what this is telling us is that if you put in 1.5, you get back 3.5. So one and a half pounds of apples will cost $3.50 at Kuiper's Farm. Next question is our first comparison question where they ask us which is greater, K of two or G of two? So we're discussing the input of two going into both the K function and the G function. Remember that these points here represent G while these points in black represent K. So G of two is at three, where k of two is at four. So as you can see, Kuiper's, the k function, would have the greater value at an input of two. So what we can conclude is that because four is greater than three, that means k of two is greater than g of two, which means that it costs more, because k of two is telling you how much it costs for the apples. It costs more for two pounds of apples at Kuiper's rather than Gobert's. The next question says, when would k of x equal g of x? At what x value would k of x equal g of x? So what we're saying is, when would the outputs be the same for inputs in either function? This is why I really like having the graph with both functions on it. We're looking for a time where these two graphs cross, which would be happening here. When x equals 4, they both have a y value of six. So my answer is when x equals four. What does this mean in the context of the problem? It means that it'll cost the same at both locations for four pounds of apples, since the x of four has the same output in both functions. Now they ask us a loaded question here in part D. Which farm would you rather go to pick apples? Well, excluding the experience of apple picking, Really, what we care about is where is it going to be most affordable? Where is it going to be cheapest to buy the apples? Well, if you're looking and see that some of the function values are lower for one of the functions, like in this case, remember these are my g of x values over here. This g of 1 half is lower than the k of 1 half. So it's more affordable to go to Gobert's pumpkin patch if you're only buying half a pound of apples. Same thing can be said for all of these points over here. However, once we get to four pounds, now the cost is the same, so it doesn't really matter which one you go to. If we were to extend this graph of g of x and extend this graph of k of x, you would start to notice that beyond that four, the g values are now always gonna be greater than the k values, which means Gobert's is going to start getting more expensive than Kuiper's. So the answer to this question D of which farm should I go to depends on how many apples I want. If I'm buying less than four pounds of apples, I want to go to Gobert's because that is less expensive. If I'm buying more than four pounds, I would want to go to Kuiper's farm because now it would be less expensive. So there's no easy answer to that question. It depends on how many apples you want. In this next problem, they're going to ask us to compare three different functions. One is given as a graph, 
One is given as an equation, and one is given as a table. The first thing they're going to do is ask us to compare a couple of the functions at a given input. Who is bigger, f of 1 or g of 1? Well, f of 1 has an output of 0. When I look at the input of 1, the output is 0. For g of 1, I'm going to have to plug in 1 for x, and then I'll simplify, finally giving me g of 1 equals 11. Well, 11 is greater than 0, so g of 1 is greater than f of 1. So if we're writing this out, we're going to say f of 1 is less than, which I can use the less than symbol or write out the words, is less than g of 1. So we need to find the output for each of these two given inputs, and then we can compare them. Next, we're asked to compare g of 1 and h of 1. Well, g of 1 we already know is 11, and h of 1, I'm going to look at this table. When the input is 1, the output is 3. Well, 11 is greater than 3, so I'm going to put a greater than symbol, or I could write out the words, is greater than. Now we're back to another question where they ask us, when are these two equal? When does k of x equal p of x? Well, we're just going to compare the two. So when x is 2, k of x is negative 5. Over here, when x is 2, k of x is negative 9. So 2 does not have the same output for the two functions, so that's not going to work. However, if we look at 4, when x is 4, k of x is 2. When x is 4, p of x is 2. So 4 has the same output in both k and p. So our answer is when x equals 4. Like I did the last time I had a graph, for this number 4, answering the same question as we did in 3, I'm going to go and plot these points over here onto the graph. When I do this, I see that this point right here, negative 5, negative 4, is shared on both the graph and the list of ordered pairs. So the x value of negative 5 would produce the same output in both w of x and z of x. Well, that wraps up unit 3. This was a great lesson to end the unit on because it relied on some previous lessons. We needed to know about multiple representations. We needed to know about function notation. And putting that all together, we're able to compare functions. Just a tip, when you're comparing functions, it does help to put all of them in the same representation, especially a graph, for easier comparison. Well, that's it for unit 3. We'll see you in unit 4.